Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is gonna be an eyeshadow palette declutter. I have been wanting to film this for a very long time. I plan on decluttering a lot of my eyeshadow palettes. I didn't wear a lot of eyeshadow this year. I didn't wear most of my eyeshadow palettes this year. And if you've been not following me for a while, I have been sharing about my struggle with allergies. I've had very bad hives on my face basically all of 2021. For the longest time, I thought it was an allergic reaction to different eyeshadows that I was trying out, different palettes that I was trying out. I would avoid eyeshadow palettes. Then I thought it was lash glue that I was allergic to. I really thought I was allergic to eyeshadow for half of this year and that's why I avoided eyeshadow in general. Um, turns out I have some environmental allergies but the big thing that was giving me an allergic reaction was nail glue. So that's what was causing all of those allergic reactions and that's the reason why my nails are so short now. I'm just trying to grow out my natural nails because I can't use acrylics or press-ons with glue. I get horrible horrible hives on my eyes my eyes swell up for like a week at a time and that's basically what i was going through um for months this year and because of that my eyeshadow palettes have been very unloved this year and i've forgotten about so many of them so i actually plan on decluttering a lot of my palettes um, i'm going to be passing a lot to friends some might be expired that I need to get rid of as well, and I do plan on kind of starting over with my eyeshadow palette collection next year. Now knowing that I can wear eyeshadow again, I can start filming eyeshadow tutorials again, and I kind of want to have a fresh start with that since it was kind of a weird year with wearing makeup in general for me. I'm so excited to finally get back into eyeshadow palettes and tutorials and everything. So I wanted to give you a little background and insight on my mentality with this declutter. In case you're new, that's what I was going through throughout 2021, 2022. I really want to get back into trying out new eyeshadow palettes, reviewing eyeshadow palettes, and finally doing more glam makeup because I was really avoiding that this year and I was really missing it too. So. I have not looked in my eyeshadow palette drawer in a very long time. I have just been using like the same two palettes for the last couple months um, since now I can actually wear eyeshadow again. So I'm gonna be rediscovering some palettes probably and then realizing what I actually wanna get rid of. So let's go ahead and get into uh, this declutter. All right, so here is my eyeshadow palette drawer. It is a complete mess and I'm very excited to finally be able to see all of the palettes that I have in my collection and swap them out, I do have like an everyday makeup drawer where I have my Anastasia Primrose palette and my Patrick Ta eyeshadow palette. Those are the ones I'm using right now that I'm definitely keeping. I use them every day. Um, and then here we have a whole lot of palettes <laughs> that I have not used in a very long time. Okay, so let's just kind of dig through here and I'm going to take everything out one by one. So the first one, I already know I want to declutter this. This was sent to me in PR from Buxom. It's a gorgeous palette. Like this is one of my favorite color stories in theory. I love the neutrals. I love purples and I love shades like this, especially during the winter time, like a smokier silver. I actually filmed a tutorial with this and I never posted it because I was so frustrated using this palette because the pigmentation just isn't there. Like I really had to dig into my brush um, or dig with my brush to use this. Um, Bucks and palettes are just not that pigmented I it's a shame because I love the look of this palette but I'm gonna pass this along to a friend because I know this palette's super new and I honestly used it like just a few times and I only used the neutral shades so I'm going to be passing that one along next up we have the Tres Luce palette from Becky G's brand Tres Luce I am definitely keeping this I actually thought I was allergic to this palette you guys um when I got allergy tested um Cobalt was one of the things I was allergic to, so I swore that I was allergic to this palette because I use like these blue shades. Um, but then it turned out I had done my nails the same day that I had a bad allergic reaction, so it was the nail glue and not this palette. So 
long story short i was avoiding this palette for a while because i honestly thought it gave me an allergic reaction that is not the case so i am excited to start using it again it's a gorgeous palette gorgeous formula and i'm excited to see what else becky g comes out with this year because i love her so much urban decay naked palettes that came out in the last year um i love the one that i purchased more i picked it out and i really wanted it so i'm going to keep this this is like a cool neutral palette literally a cool neutral palette cool tones in here i love this kind of silver shade so i'm gonna hang on to this um i only got this fairly recently i might not use it a ton but i want to revisit it i think that this is more like a springtime palette and i got this in october as pr so i want to use it throughout the upcoming spring and summer and if i don't use it a lot then maybe i'll pass it along but i think that this would be really pretty for some springtime look all right when it comes to anastasia palette that's my favorite formula so i'm gonna hang on to all of them and i really just need to start using them more i will give you a little bit of info on which ones i do and don't like this is the one i like the least i honestly just don't like <laughs> this is the Car Car carly bible anastasia collab the only reason i'm keeping this palette like in theory it looks gorgeous i honestly should wear it more I don't know why I I think that sometimes these kind of shades look a little bit muddy on me like they don't suit my complexion maybe I just need to play with them more uh, maybe I should challenge myself and use it more because the reason I don't want to declutter this palette is because I went to Spain in 2019 um, with my mom and my aunt the only thing that I purchased in Spain was this palette I didn't get any kind of souvenir or anything. I just went to Sephora in Spain and purchased this palette. And that is, it's just sentimental. I'm gonna be talking about a lot of sentimental makeup products as we kept, keep getting deeper into here. But the rest of these Anastasia palettes are all stunning and I honestly should use one for like some winter looks like the Sultry palette. The year it came out, this was my favorite eyeshadow shade of all time. This is a gorgeous cool tone palette and I'm not a cool tone eyeshadow person and this palette is absolutely gorgeous. So for me to think it's gorgeous says a lot because I avoid cool tones at all times. The Jackie Ina palette is also stunning. This is a beautiful winter palette. I'm like kind of rediscovering things right now that I'm like, I should pull these out. This is a gorgeous one for springtime the norvina palette you can tell this one's well loved and also soft glam is very well loved some of my favorite palettes in my collection but i haven't used them this year just because of my um allergy issues so i need to revisit all those palettes very soon this is a sentimental one that i i just can't get rid of it's the Too faced holiday palette from 2000 14 my husband gifted it to me for my birthday when um he was just my boyfriend at the time and then i just uh, i used to be obsessed with this shade honey pot every time i open this palette it just takes me back to being like 23 years old and just getting into makeup i didn't even have a youtube channel yet um i had just started my makeup instagram and i was just so excited about this palette so basically this palette makes me very emotional in the best way possible and i like to hold on to things like that because i moved around so much in the last decade my parents moved out of the country i don't have a lot of like childhood things um or things that are older than like five years other than a few makeup products and that's why I hold on to those sentimental things. Next, let's go for some palettes that I know I'm gonna get rid of. This is from Wander. This is actually brand new. Let me pass this along to a friend, that's easy. I think this was something I got in an Ipsy um, bag, and I'm gonna pass this along to a friend. I get my Ipsy's as PR now, and a lot of times, like their palettes are just not good. I, um, I used to pay for Ipsy, and then I just I didn't want to anymore because I didn't like the palettes um, and I get a lot of things that I wasn't liking their PR boxes I get some things that I like but like I used to make monthly unboxings of Ipsy and BoxyCharm and then I was just getting things I didn't like so I didn't want to hang on to those and um, keep making those videos All right this is another palette that I got in a BoxyCharm I believe I actually used it up quite a bit this is the Violet Voss Creme Brulee palette this is a gorgeous 
palette. The one thing is I wish there was another transition shade in here. Um, it goes from like a smoky orange or like a burnt orange, deeper brown. There's not like a lighter brown in here. So I'm going to declutter this even though I really like this palette just because there's a lot of other palettes that I really like and I have a lot of neutrals. Here's a little mini palette from Juno & Co. I'm going to declutter this as well. Just a little quad that doesn't, I'm, I'm not gonna get a lot of use out of this. I could pass this along to somebody else. I'm gonna hang on to both of these palettes from Laura Lee Cosmetics, Nudie 2. This is actually a gorgeous palette. I was looking at it the other day and I'm like, I need to start using this more has a lot of like mauvey tones and like those silver shades that I like. And then Candy Skies, I only used this a few times because when this was released, um, I started having, that was when I was like really having a lot of allergic reactions and wasn't wearing eyeshadows. So I want to start using it a bit more and I think this will be a really fun palette for the upcoming spring. I'm gonna declutter these palettes from Complex Culture. This is a brand that, um, it's actually in Ipsy quite a lot. Like I do like these palettes. I'm actually liking the hair tools from this brand more than the makeup right now. I'm using the hair tools every day, but they have kind of like all kind of beauty products. But I'm gonna be passing these along too. They're fairly new. Next we have the Huda Beauty Mobs Obsessions palette. I don't think they make this palette anymore. It is a palette that I used for a Valentine's Day tutorial. Lots of pink tones. I'm going to be decluttering it. I do want to try some more palettes from Huda Beauty. I know they've released a lot more since then. And I'm just going to be decluttering this one. I'm not, this is something I'll wear very rarely. I'm going to hang on to my Natasha Denona palettes. I, every time I say this in a declutter and I never live up to it and I need to hold myself accountable to this. The thing is, when it comes to luxury makeup products, I have a really hard time letting myself, like giving myself permission to use it. I always think like I need to save it for a special occasion, but honestly, just wear Natasha Denona on a Wednesday for no reason because like, why not? You know, otherwise they're just going to sit in your drawer for the last two years, like these beautiful palettes when I could have gotten a lot of different looks out of them. This is the Metropolis palette and this is the gold palette. Like these are stunning and I should film, like I honestly want to film tomorrow with both of these palettes. So I need to start using them more. I need to not be afraid of hitting pan on expensive makeup products. Um, I got this one for my birthday like two years ago and I feel like the best way to respect the value of luxury products is to actually show them love and use them and not let them just collect dust in a drawer. So I had an excuse this year but I've had these for more than a year. I've had them for like two or three years and I rarely use them. I use this one quite a bit but this one I was like nervous to use so I need to allow myself to use them and I will be keeping them. All right here's actually another Natasha Denona palette. This is the Sunrise palette and let's see if this was e.l.f. if this was Colourpop if this was Too Faced will I reach for this palette every day and the answer is no um and so I shouldn't hang on to it just because it was Natasha Denona because Regardless, I think it's just gonna sit in this drawer until my next declutter video. So I'm gonna be passing it along so somebody else can get more use out of it because these just aren't my colors right now. I'm in, I'm always into neutrals, but I really am not liking, um, I don't see myself doing like orangey and red makeup looks anytime soon. Next up, okay, let's talk about this palette from Lunar Beauty. This one is stunning, Eternal Eclipse. This is a gorgeous palette. Yeah, I love, this is probably my favorite silver in my collection. It is absolutely gorgeous. Lots of stunning neutral shades. I love this bluish shade with the glitter. I'm definitely keeping this. This is gonna be gorgeous for like smokier winter look. All right, we have another ABH palette, Amrezy. I forgot I even had this. I think, I'm gonna hang on to it for now. I, if I don't use it in by like Valentine's Day, um, I should declutter it because I think that out of the other ABH palettes that I'm keeping, this is the one that I've shown the least love. Um, I know it was limited edition, but I'm going to hang on to it. Sometimes like I have a hard time using limited edition makeup like on my Instagram and stuff. 
but I'm gonna use this one for now, or at least attempt to and revisit in like six weeks. All right, next we have the ColourPop and Chrissy collab. I'm definitely gonna be decluttering this palette. I basically just purchased this because of Raw Beauty Chrissy, and I love her so much. Um, but I, th this is not the kind of color scheme that I would normally buy. And I should have been realistic about that when I purchased it. Um, I had a hard time creating looks with this palette. This was another palette where I would film a makeup tutorial and then I never posted it because I just didn't like the way it turned out. I, I think that these colors for me are a little harder to work with. Like you have to be kind of creative. Um, and sometimes I like to do that and sometimes I don't. <laughs> and it was just a little too much energy to try to get an eyeshadow look to be pretty um, for me with this palette because I like really simple makeup looks. I like something really sparkly that I just do one swipe and it looks gorgeous. This one with this color story, it, it was a little bit too much effort um, for how I like to do my makeup. So I'm going to be decluttering it. All right, I have these five pan palettes from ColourPop. I believe there's one more, but I do not see it here. Um, I bought these all to review. There were some I liked more than others. I honestly just want to hang on to maybe one. I'm definitely getting rid of the red one and the silver one. I think there's a purple one too. If I find it, I will declutter it because I don't wear those shades. So I'm decluttering these. Um, I just love this glitter shade. I think I will use that a bit more. I have a ton of other small palettes like this. So I'm going to keep this one. This one is in the shade Lyric. Next we have the Too Faced Pumpkin Spice Palette. I should have done some looks with it this fall. This is actually a really gorgeous palette and you can see how little I've used it um, since it came out last year. I know Too Faced sent it to me last fall and I did film some tutorials with it. Um, because it's so new, I'm gonna hang on to this palette. I definitely should use this one a bit more. I haven't used it since last year, so I'm going to be hanging on to that. Um, next, let's see. Lunar Beauty Life's a Drag Facelift. I haven't used this since the summer. I reviewed it over the summer, and I think I'm going to be decluttering it. I think that I have these shades in other palettes. I'm really not gonna use the colorful shades. I'm just gonna use mostly this, and if I go like that, I have all these shades in other palettes and palettes that I am more emotionally attached to. So I'm going to be decluttering this palette even though it's fairly new um, so I can pass it along to a friend since it is in really good condition. I have one more palette from Laura Lee. She sent over, this was a while ago. This was honestly maybe 2019. She sent um, her single eyeshadows and um, I never unpackaged them for a really long time. And then one day I unpackaged all the singles and put them in this, um, little case that she sent over as well, and then I never ended up using them. So because this is brand new, I have a makeup artist friend that I can pass this along to. Next we have Too Faced Naked Honey. This is probably my favorite naked palette. I always bring this out during the spring and summertime. Like this shade is my favorite kind of yellow, greenish gold shade. Um, so I'm going to hang on to this. I kind of missed out on using it this summer when my allergic reactions were so bad, but this is something I always end up using in the summer and I'm excited to start using it again. I'm gonna start using it like in January. I'm gonna use every palette. I honestly need to do like a different palette every day in January. Um, next up, let's see, Olimar Cosmetics. Okay, this is another thing I'm emotionally attached to and it's any palette and I have a few other in my collection. Any palette that has Spanish or Spanglish in it, um, I'm always attached to like Latina owned brands because I'm also Latina, I speak Spanish, and it's really nice to get that um, personal connection in makeup products. So, but let's be realistic. Am I gonna use these palettes because I haven't in a long time? <sighs> I think that, I honestly, I don't really see myself using this palette too much more. It's been a very long time since I've used it and um, I don't get excited looking at it. I feel bad. Like I get excited because it's in Spanish and it has like different references in Spanish, but I'm not getting excited about like really using it. If they come out with like another palette this year, maybe I'll check that out. 
I'm honestly, I'm going to declutter both of them because I'm not, they're not like speaking to me just looking at them. I'm not getting excited about doing looks with them right now. Um, but I do love this brand. I love their brushes. I know it's not like an attack on the brand when I say I want to declutter something, but sometimes I feel bad, especially because I really want to support um, different businesses. Okay, next, this is another one that I'm emotionally attached to, the Salvaje palette from ColourPop and collab with Becky G. I'm not gonna use this palette. I know myself and I'm not gonna use it. It's another thing that it's like, has different shades like Cafecito, Estrella, Celosa. Um, I'm gonna see Becky G in concert, honestly, like next week. So I'm already supporting her and I bought her own brand too. I'm literally gonna see her in concert. Those were expensive tickets and I think she's gonna be okay if <laughs> I declutter this palette. We're gonna be saying goodbye to this palette. Becky G has her own makeup brand now. She's not promoting her ColourPop collabs and I can let go of this one and just focus on getting new products from her actual makeup collection. All right, so we have some of these mini palettes from Too Faced. These are four that came out in the beginning of the year. And then this is one that is exclusive to Ulta that I bought this fall. I'm definitely keeping this. I really like this palette. I've actually gotten quite a bit of use out of it. I've been traveling quite a bit this fall and winter too. And this is the palette that I bring with me. This is their fruit cake, forbidden fruit cake palette. So definitely keeping this one. And then I know I want to get rid of some of these. I think I'm keeping the Kitty Likes to Scratch palette. This is like the more neutral palette. Yeah, I'm gonna hang on to this one. I actually get a bit of use out of this. And sometimes I think about bringing this one on trips too. If I didn't have the other Too Faced one, I would bring this one. And then I'm gonna declutter both of these, the Let's Play palette and the That's My Jam palette. These both have color stories that I really don't gravitate towards very often. Then we have the Light My Fire palette. I'm not gonna use this. This is kind of like that same vibe as the Natasha Denona Sunrise palette. I don't like palettes that have this kind of reddish tone, yellow color scheme. I prefer more solid neutrals and not those really reddish tones. So I am not going to keep that. I have this mini palette from Colored Rain. I actually got quite a bit of use out of this palette for a while, um, but I'm gonna be passing it along. This is another one I got in a BoxyCharm. A while ago, this is called their Mimosa Moment. I'm gonna declutter that. All right, let's talk about the other palettes that make me emotional. The Urban Decay Naked 3 palette. This is a palette I'll never use. I honestly just need to keep this in like a memory box somewhere in my house um, because I only keep this because my husband bought it for me the day we stopped being long distance back in 2015. And that's really the only reason I keep it. This palette was the most talked about palette at the time. Now the mirror is coming off as well. And like the strip that says Urban Decay fell off the palette that I just have like laying in here. Um, but basically we were long distance our first year of our relationship. And then he drove um, 12 hours from Indiana to North Carolina the day he was moving to North Carolina when where I lived. And on his way to move, he stopped at Sephora and picked up this palette. And um, he surprised me um, like a few days early before he was supposed to move. He surprised me at my apartment and he was holding this eyeshadow palette. So I don't use this palette, but I will have this as a memory for the rest of my life. And then this is the other palette that makes me emotional. This is my first ever high-end eyeshadow palette. The Urban Decay Naked Basics palette. My mom gave this to me for Christmas in 2013. I remember it was like $32 and she's like, why are you buying such an expensive eyeshadow palette? Because the only thing I ever had before that was like Wet n Wild um, eyeshadow trios. And it looks like this now. Um, I dropped the black shade. I'm never gonna use this, but this was such an iconic palette believe it or not, back in the day, almost 10 years ago. And when I was teaching high school, this was my entire makeup palette. Like I would use this for under eyes. I would get to school early. I had to be at work at 6.55 in the morning. And at like 6.40 in the morning, I would go in my classroom and just do my makeup in the mirror. Um, I would use these shades for my under eye. This would be my highlighter for my whole face. I would use this shade. The reason I use this shade so much is because it was also my contour shade 
um, because this was like my whole makeup collection in the moment um, in 2013. And this was, this was like iconic in my life. So another like m memory unleashed every time I open this palette, like it really holds a lot of energy for me. Like it makes me so like emotional just being transported into that moment with this palette so i am going to keep this for the rest of my life i need to move these things out of my drawer and just put them in like a time capsule all right so next let's talk about some ColourPop palettes these are two of my actually favorite palettes in my collection going coconuts might be like my favorite palette and i loved this palette so much i am going to keep this the only reason i would get rid of it would be just to repurchase a new one since this one is like a bit older and super worn in um i'm gonna keep this once i hit pan quite a bit on this palette i'm gonna repurchase it as long as they still make this palette because i this was my go-to everyday quick and easy makeup palette and so was the california love i actually just started using this palette again um i traveled about a week ago just for a weekend and i brought this palette with me this is a gorgeous everyday neutral palette i've been mentioning how i don't like palettes that are like very red tone and have like yellows and oranges um i prefer something that's more warm like this like this still has some of those like reddish browns and orange shades but this is a lot more practical for the way i like to do my makeup um and i really like this palette this is my favorite palette in that kind of color story so two of the most like cheapest palettes in my collection two of the most loved palettes in my collection that i will keep reaching for i was really happy when i started using this palette again um just this month so definitely hanging on to these so here is a palette i know i'm gonna get rid of this is the ciate london palette i believe i got this in a boxy charm um i used to make monthly boxy charm unboxings i stopped because i didn't like what i was getting and i just i didn't like making the videos anymore um and i don't know if boxy charm still sends me things sometimes i get boxes sometimes i don't but they were very like um pushy about making videos and i didn't like that um and i was making videos for years and you just get like commission if um with your boxy charm link but it just wasn't worth it to me i didn't like how like pushy they were but anyways <laughs> with that being said i'm not hanging on to this palette lots of jewel tones Lots of shades that I don't really wear a lot, so I'm going to be getting rid of this. I get to a place with palettes sometimes where I wear them in a lot. I use them so much, and then I just give up on them. Like I'm like, oh, I used it too much. I need to put it away, and then it just sits in a drawer for like two years, and that's what happened with this. Like I loved this palette. Like This is all used up right here. Um, I'm going to start using this again and get hit pan on like one or two more shades before I get rid of it. I don't even use these shades. Like this is my go-to eyeshadow look right here. So it just shows like my habits with eyeshadow wearing when you see like what is my favorite palette and everything like that. But anyways, definitely loved this palette so much. I need to start wearing it again and basically use it up just a bit more i think i can get to that place by the spring or summer and then the latte 2 palette i haven't used as much as the original i think that i like the original more the original just has more warm tone shades that i like these are a little bit cool so like the transition shades the jump from i use this as like a under eye setting powder this barely shows up on my skin and then I have these really deep shades. So that's what makes it a little bit difficult for me. Sometimes I do use this as a transition shade now that I think about it. Sometimes I'll mix this and this together. But I just felt like the actual shades made a little bit more sense in the original. Especially the transition shades, like the matte shades. Um, I feel like these are redundant. But I am going to hang on to both of these for now. Maybe I'll use them together and use the transition shades from these. Mix with the shimmers of these. And I don't know. We'll have to revisit in a couple months. Because I know I love that formula so much. I know I got a lot of love out of those palettes. And I want to see if I'm still liking them if I use them now. Next, we have the One Size Palette. I actually use this palette quite a bit. I'm going to hang on to this palette for now. Like when I got it back in... November of last year, I was using it basically every day for about two months or so, and then I got hit with um, my allergy issue and I put the palette away. So I'm gonna revisit it and see if I'm still liking it. 
I basically stick to all these neutrals. I'll never use this side of the palette or this green shade. Like these four shades I'll probably never use. But like this, I think I really, really love this palette. So I'm going to see if I still am interested in it. I feel like this is a little bit weird of a declutter because I honestly just used bronzer as eyeshadow when I did do my makeup for like the last six months or so because I was like so nervous of having an allergic reaction. Um, okay, the Too Faced palettes, I keep them because another thing that just makes me so emotional, one of the first videos that did well on my channel that I posted in 2015 was like a comparison of all these palettes from Too Faced and they all hold a lot of memory for me. This was my first full size eyeshadow palette. The Urban Decay Naked Basics was my first high end eyeshadow palette and then this was my first full size high end eyeshadow palette. This is the original packaging before they made the packaging smaller. You know I'll never wear this on my face, like all of these palettes, I'm never actually gonna apply these, but it's that emotional attachment that I can't get rid of and I'm totally fine with it. Like I, I don't have my high school yearbooks or any childhood toys or pictures really or anything like that. Like moving, having my family in a different country and we moved across the country like when I was a senior in high school. Um, and so now I hold on to random things like eyeshadow. That's <laughs> my new thing in my life, I guess. But it is what it is and I'm, I'm cool with that. Let's take a quick trip down memory lane with this palette. <laughs> I'm laughing because the way that this color story was so iconic in 2014, 2013, this was revolutionary at the time is so funny to me <laughs> and you could tell it's not that pigmented because you can see how deeply i had to dig my brush into this palette and yeah that's a little trip down memory lane keeping this palette just for the good times good memories this was one of my first if not my first eyeshadow palette yeah it was my first eyeshadow palette review on my channel that video no longer exists um, for the sake of my not being embarrassed. <laughs> um, but I just remember how hard it was for me to try to review a product at the time. Like, I was so nervous. This one's actually kind of a cute palette. Oh, I remember that summer. Summer of 2014. <laughs> I feel like I sound, like, so old right now. But the summer of 2014, I remember, like, I went to a Third Eye Blind concert. And got ready using this palette. Um, I think like I went to a Fall Out Boy concert and used this palette. Basically a lot of happy memories in my early 20s um, with this palette. It's those kind of memories where at the time it just seems so like mundane and not exciting. But now a little bit older, I like romanticize um, those times honestly I think I just miss my college friends and the memories of this palette and hanging out with them that summer before I moved across the country is what this reminds me of so honestly I should just call my friends and get rid of this palette but let me do both I'm gonna keep this palette and reach out to my friends all right this is another iconic face palette you guys look at how much <laughs> it looks like a bird got into this palette <laughs> The way this lacked pigmentation, but I try to convince myself that this was the greatest palette of all time back in the day because I didn't have the, like, modern renaissance from Anastasia Beverly Hills had not come out yet, and that kind of changed the game. Like, those type of products changed the game in makeup. This was so unpigmented <laughs> compared to that, so... Not the best palette, but I had so much fun with this palette. The way that everybody tried to get this palette, I remember when I was teaching high school, this palette released at like 6 a.m. and I tried to get it before work. And then I would try to get it like in between classes, like it kept selling out. And I remember telling my students like, oh, I, I didn't get the two, new Too Faced palette. Did anybody get the new Too Faced palette? And then it re-released again. Like there was several t days where we go out of stock and back in stock. And then it was, um, I was at my bachelorette party when it was back in stock. And I was like in the bathroom of a club trying to order this palette. <laughs> 
<laughs> because I don't know. I just really wanted to review this palette. I really wanted to try it. And it was when I was just starting my channel, I was trying so hard to um, review new makeup as soon as I could get it and try to grow my channel. And that is why I was in the club trying to buy this palette. <laughs> And I'm going to hold on to this forever. I'm going to um, bring this out in, at Christmas time in 2000, what, like 50 or 2060 and tell my grandchildren that story and they will have to be amused by that story as well. So obviously I'm hanging on to that palette. Let's actually do some decluttering here. Um, Violet Voss, a little quad. I am not going to be keeping this. I did use it a little bit. It was another thing I got in a boxy charm. I'm going to be passing that along. I actually want to get rid of this one from Natasha Denona. I got this in a boxy charm, but it says matte reddish shades that I don't really use. This is called their Peak 5 Pan Palette. So I'm going to declutter this. I was hanging on to it just because it's Natasha Denona. But if I take away the name, this is just not a palette I would ever buy for myself. So I'm going to be passing that along to someone else. All right, this is the KKW Artist and Muse Palette. It was... Like a cool concept at the time. This was the second collab with KKW and Mario. I'm really not interested in KKW. I'm, I don't really know what's going on with the brand when they relaunched or did they relaunch. I haven't been keeping up with them. So I haven't been keeping up with the Kardashians that way, but I have been keeping up with Mario. I am loving Mario so much. He just joined TikTok and I'm so inspired by him and I just think he's an amazing makeup artist, amazing person. I'm like seeing his daily life. I'm like, you do more by 6 a.m. than I do an entire week. Like he is so humble and cool. Um, so I'm going to declutter this and I'm going to start buying eyeshadow palettes by um, from Makeup by Mario just because I've been really interested in getting some and I'm going to be just looking out for some new releases from them because everything I've tried from Makeup by Mario is so good love that brand i think that's one of my new favorite brands from 2021 so we're gonna declutter this and make room for new products from makeup by mario in 2022 all right we're getting to the bottom of a few more sentimental things um this one from tarte the rainforest after dark palette this was my first ever face palette i tell these stories all the time in my declutters but i only make like one declutter a year so this is just another palette that was one of my first high-end makeup products right when I was starting my Instagram, my blog, and I was just so desperate to try to get into beauty. I was really unhappy teaching. This is another palette that I would um, put on in my classroom before the kids would come into school. Um, and I just wanted to do makeup so badly. And I, I think just having that memory flashback every time that I open these palettes, like it makes me wanna cry and it makes me um, want to, it just, kind of gives me like that fire again to um, really take a lot of makeup videos seriously. And I think that's kind of why I was putting off this declutter. I'm gonna like start crying. But that's a lot of the reason I was putting off this declutter was knowing how emotionally attached I was to some of these products and um, how exciting it was to get like PR of some of these products and just trying to rush to get videos up and um, really have that momentum prior to this year and just having the whole allergic reaction situation um, really threw me off. So I will be hanging on to this palette because it just reminds me of like how much I really was trying to believe in myself at the time and how much I really, really wanted to be um, in a position where I ha could have all these eyeshadow palettes and get PR and everything like that. And I don't want to lose sight of that. And I just want to like feel fired up about filming again um, like I was then. So that just gives me a lot of like good energy going into next year. All right, so moving on to the ABH palette. This is the Shadow Couture palette. Uh, why am I crying about eyeshadow? All right, so this was an eyeshadow palette before Modern Renaissance. Back in the day, back in like 2014, 2015, this came out. I think 2015. Yes, it came out spring of 2015. And I got engaged summer of 2015. And I wore this eyeshadow um, when I got proposed to. I also wore it on my actual wedding day, pink champagne. This was um, very special to me at the time. And it brings back a lot of those memories. I think just like... 
being young why is like the Dell song playing in the back of my head the song easy on me like that like when you're young and kind of like naive and you just like haven't been shut down as much so you don't feel as defeated about yourself um that's where this brings me back when i was just so so excited to um film with makeup and stuff so obviously another palette i'm hanging on to for emotional reasons and it just feels good to relive those memories and emotions and it's it's making me feel really expired and inspired <laughs> this eyeshadow palette is expired but it still inspires me. It makes me really inspired to make um, more videos next year and not have any like excuses or setbacks um, now that I got over the whole allergy thing. I'm just keeping this for fun. Becca does not exist anymore and it makes me so sad. Um, this palette was legendary. I will tell my grandchildren about this palette. I will bring it out in Thanksgiving of 19, or not 1960, of 2060, and tell them about how difficult it was to get this palette, and who Jaclyn Hill was at the time, and back in the day when there was a thing called Becca Cosmetics, I can see it now, guys, and those are the kind of stories uh, the children of 19, of 2060 need to hear about, so we're keeping that palette. All right, we're down to the end. Can you tell that I have, like, an aesthetic when it comes to packaging? I love this palette by Rare Beauty. I'm definitely keeping it. This is the Discovery eyeshadow palette. I love Rare Beauty. I love Selena Gomez. I think she's one of the coolest celebrities ever. Um, I'm definitely going to be reviewing more from Rare Beauty in the future, and I really like this palette. This is another one I would wear all the time this year. Definitely keeping it. If you're interested, definitely check it out. All right, and lastly, we have the Persona Cosmetics Identity 2 palette. I'm going to hang on to this for now, but I do want to be realistic that if I don't use it by the springtime, I should get rid of it. It's more jewel tones. Um, part of me is keeping this for sentimental reasons, just because um, I've been very happy to work with Persona, to meet Sona, and I went to this launch party um, and it brings back that memory. I went with um, my best friend at the time. She's still my friend. She just moved away. And I think that that brings back that memory of like a really good time. And um, it was like 2019. And it was one of those things where you don't realize how blessed you are in the moment. Um, so that's why I'm hanging on to this palette for now. Um, I might revisit it and be realistic that I don't really use it. This isn't really my color story. I do love the original one a lot more than this. But I'm going to hang on to it for now and see if I can get myself to use it a bit. And then if I don't, declutter. Okay, so here is a look at all my palettes I'm keeping. This is so much more organized. I can actually see everything. I just put palettes that are like influencer brands over here. Dominique Cosmetics, Laura Lee, Persona, the One Size Palette, the Lunar Beauty Palette. Urban Decay over here, Too Faced, Natasha, um, ColourPop over there, and all the ABH palettes so I can actually see everything. And then these are all the palettes that I am just keeping for memories that I cried about all of these palettes that made me very emotional. Um, I'm gonna put these in a separate drawer, like in a closet. Um, that way I don't get them kind of mixed in here because these are old palettes. like. Their formula is not very good at this point. They're all like palettes that are five years old or more. Um, so I'm going to just put them in a separate drawer so I can actually focus on the palettes that I do want to wear on a daily basis. And then I can just hang on to these for sentimental reasons and just put them away and not have them in my everyday makeup collection. And then these are all of the eyeshadow palettes that I am getting rid of. I think I got rid of about a third of my eyeshadow palette collection and now I can actually focus on using the palettes in my collection and just organizing everything and seeing what I actually like is very necessary and it's going to be a lot easier for me to film um, different looks now, now that I can see what I actually have in my collection and that I've assessed each palette and what it would be good for. So I hope you enjoyed this declutter this very rambly declutter and if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i'll talk to you guys soon in my next video thank you so much for watching bye